A new political party just launched. It's called the Forward Party, whose organizers want to appeal to millions of voters who say America's two-party system just is not working. The Forward Party says it'll focus on three pillars, free people where voters can celebrate difference, individual choice, and remove barriers to reach their full potential. Thriving communities where society can live in a good life and in safe places. And finally, a vibrant democracy where Americans are given more choices in election, more confidence in government, and more say on the future. But on the national stage, is there room for another party and will it even appeal to voters? Joining us now to talk more about third parties, White House columnist Niall Stanich from our partners at The Hill. Niall, you know, historically it's been very hard for a third party to make any headway in Washington. Why is that? Largely because our election system is winner take all. We don't have a system like many, for example, Western European nations do, where there's some form of ranked voting. Lots of places in Western Europe, if a party wins, say, 20% of the overall vote, it can have quite healthy representation in the legislature. You win 20% in an American election, you lose. And that's a major problem. Now, of course, there are other issues as well. I mean, the, the two major parties are enormously well established. But I think that winner takes it all system is one of the major barriers to having a successful third party here. Well, we just heard about those three pillars uh, from this new forward party. What's different about this new party from maybe other third parties of the past? I guess the point of difference is that they have both Democrats and Republicans involved in this. The two biggest names probably being Andrew Yang, who contested the Democratic nomination in 2020, and Christine Todd Whitman, a well-established veteran Republican. That is different. Um, those kind of promises or pillars you outlined, Nicole, I don't know. I think they are open to the criticism that they're just proposing vague things that no one really disagrees with. I mean, something like, we want thriving communities. Well, there aren't any politicians running on an anti-thriving communities ticket, you know? Right. So that is the sort of danger that it's too vague. Well, touche. Uh, you know, so there's recent polling that really shows a stark political divide in the country. I don't think we even need polling uh, to tell us that. We all know mm. that. So is that that divide, though, maybe actually make does that make it a great time for a third party candidate or a third party to try to to enter the fray? I can see the argument for a third party. I mean, certainly when there is this perception of enormous polarization and parties that perhaps turn to their extremes or lift up the extreme members of their own party, then in theory, that does create space for a third party. Now, having said that, it gets more difficult when you get into the nuts and bolts of it. This new party is wanting, for example, a moderate approach to guns. Well, the two major parties, for all their faults, just passed a fairly minor, fairly modest gun reform bill. So there are, are those points to consider, as well as the inherent challenges to a third party that I mentioned at the top. And the challenges certainly exist. Niall Standage, Live for us from Washington. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.